Hello, my friend. Our scripture today is from Romans 12, verses 1 through 2. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God what is good and acceptable and perfect. God bless the reading and hearing in the scripture today. The Apostle Paul says that the talk ought to lead to the walk and the doctrine ought to give way to duty and that learning ought to inform our living and that what we believe ought to determine the way we behave, really. Paul is telling all of us to give ourselves fully and completely to Jesus daily in the transforming power of Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit to renew our minds. And that's not all. Paul goes on to say that by doing this, we'll be able to discern what God wants us to do, the will of God, and we'll do what is good and acceptable and perfect. And that's a lot. This is so very, very much that it's almost unbelievable unless you've tried it and you've experienced it and you lived it out and you have found it to be true because it's happened to you. When we say, Lord, I give you my everything. I give you my mind because I want to think your thoughts after you. I give you my heart, Lord, because I want to love other people the way you love them. I want to love them for your sake with the love that's greater than my own love. Lord, I give you my body because I want to serve you today and the next week and the weeks after that. And there's something that I want to be so different about my service to others that it's openly expressed. That my service is done for your sake, Lord Christ. When we say this to Lord Christ and we mean it from the very depth of our hearts, then God uses that through the Holy Spirit to transform us and the, and the transformation happens to us daily because with Jesus Christ enabling us, we move closer to perfection. We strive to be the best that we can be and with Jesus' help and assistance, we're better today than yesterday. May 24th. There's an important date to mark on your calendar each year. Some call it Altersgate Day. You probably already know of John Wesley because of his historic heartwarming experience. That's where he was in a Bible study and he felt his heart warmed. It was transformed in a way that he'd never had it done before. We say it's new birth, it's justification, and it can happen at any point in our lives. And it makes a meaningful and useful relationship to Christ. John Wesley had gone to a Moravian Bible study and they were studying Luther's preface to the Epistle on Romans. It's impressive and inspirational in its expression of what faith is about. It says that our sole reliance on Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of our sins that and completely trusting our lives to Christ gives us salvation. John Wesley understood this path to God. It was then that he had the heartwarming experience and it changed the face of Christianity. His heart was warmed when he gave himself to Christ and the Holy Spirit came into his heart in a way that he hadn't experienced before. John Wesley became one of the greatest preaching evangelists in the Christian church. He started a revival in the United States that history has not known since then. He was a preacher of great power and an organizer genius. May 24th, it's the anniversary of John Wesley's Alter Gate heartwarming experience. John Benjamin Wesley never ceased in preaching the doctrine of salvation by faith and by God's grace and acceptance, it's free for everyone. And that there's blessed assurance of Jesus' holy presence, which gives us his continual care. We say today that heartfelt spirituality keeps our focus on Jesus and will be obedient to him. A pastor friend told me about his 
pastor friend Douglas who'd been working hard and he was playing tennis one afternoon very hard. He noticed a difference in the beating of his heart so he went to the hospital to have it checked out. They checked him and they told him you're just playing hard and you need to make some adjustments and so on. And he came out and he didn't get his strength back very rapidly. He went to the funeral of a cousin of his and they came out to the cars because the funeral was just over and the family had just finished dinner and were getting into their cars and everybody was just crying. And up walks this woman they call Sister Wilson. Sister Wilson is a woman of prayer. She prayed with Douglas's mother and his aunt and then Douglas said, she walked up to me and she called me by my boyhood nickname and she said, Dougie, you need me to pray for you. He said, yes I do, I need you to pray. And she said, I need to pray for your heart. And Doug said, well, all right. He said, I looked around and all the loved ones were there and all the neighbors were there that I'd grown up around. He said Sister Wilson was an enthusiastic prayer and when she prayed everybody within 50 yards knew what she was saying in prayer. They knew also that she was praying. He said as she prayed I put my hand on my heart and she started praying for me and not much was happening and then finally he said Sister Wilson opened her eyes and she said Dougie get your hand off your heart and up in the air praising God and he'll take care of your problems. In order to live a heartfelt faith, we need to focus on praising Jesus. Let me wrap it up this way. When we put our hands up in praise, our interest is focused in our affection for Jesus and our praise. We freely receive what God has to give us and in whatever place God chooses to give it. Paul says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. When we give all of ourselves to Jesus Christ in commitment to Him, that's all that we have to do. That's what causes us to be transformed by God daily and transformers for Christ in the world. Alleluia. Let's pray together. Gracious and holy Heavenly Father, transform us in ways that are new and exciting. Use each life for your glory in this world so that others may find fullness in you because we witness to our experience of your heartwarming presence in our lives and we can show friends, families, and co-workers the way to you. Guide us in our sensitivity and our caring ministries let us be encourager to others, encouraging them to focus on Jesus, praising Jesus. In Christ's name, amen. I encourage you to look on the internet for the resources for John Wesley. Here in this church, we celebrate the saints. Go to alphachurch.org and click on the links. I invite you to participate with your tithes and offerings and Email me with prayers and updates. May the power of the Lord's transforming love be your daily blessing. Amen.